please do not take the ports, any of these ports, which is not so because it's just painting, right? The um, it does no more. So, as you probably know, the wall is hugely popular in the middle of Elon, and there's a huge demand for it over at the low post. Um, and I wanted to see whether what the time is because it asked for a year now when that consideration will take place to potentially take one of the ports, one of the closest to the track really making noise and convert it to. Sorry, I just wanted to do that, but. No, you're still so, you're good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. I think that we should have fixed that. Yeah. If I may pick the chair, I'll just say maybe Ashley as well to say, uh, Mr. Moral, if you can you put your contact information yes. to Ashley, you will accept. Yeah. Yeah. And then I just finish presenting that online. Mm -hmm. If you're attending via Zoom and you'd like to make a public comment on any item not on the agenda, please use the raise hand feature. Press the star nine. Can I just ask the who will follow me? Seven follow me. Thank you. 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 Thank um, so, with um, the resignation of Oberon Brosnan, um, who was chair, we are now at a place where staff recommends that um, the PRC follow procedures established um, from October 24, uh, 2024 for selecting um, chair and vice chair of the PRC. And what that um, states is that the longest serving chair um, becomes, or longest serving commission member becomes chair, and then the and August um, commission member serves as vice chair. So with that, um, once the chair and vice chair are selected, that um, would begin September 24th, and the chair and vice chair would serve until um, May of 2025. Um, At this time, if you'd like to make a public comment, please bring a you're on Zoom, he's not the best at the Maybe that name, you can use star nine if you need to raise hand function. No other comment. No other comment. Actually, support the same presentation as long as the members are willing to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's helpful to have some of the members about who I am and check your question about who he is. Uh, I think it's pretty good. Um, so, I believe I joined the uh, Parks and Recreation Commission maybe two years ago, so the longest through the second one. So but at the same time, I'm also a young child and pretty passionate about just providing, you know, amenities and opportunities for them. It's also a special participation and also for me to be doing the staff to actually execute on, you know, the city. Um, I'm happy to help facilitate this role. It's I think the responsibilities are too much more, too much more. It's helping our meetings and and the logistics. Appreciate it. Thank you. Peter Joshua, I'm going to push it three years. You know, if you sign up to one of these, that's three years, and I'm going to see it being adjusted for that. I think we have a presentation last year, one of the last year, and I'm going to give you that to the one series that we've always said. So, the council will see you. Yeah. Yeah. You do, yes. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion. 
that we uh, or Member Joshua as the next chair and uh, Member B as the next vice chair. So May, there's a motion on the floor to make Commissioner the Vice Chair Joshua Chair and to make Commissioner the Vice Chair. Commissioner Donald. I vote yes. Okay. And Commissioner N. Can you vote? I think yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Vice Chair Joshua? Yes. Okay. And Commissioner Lee? Yes. And yes, Commissioner Mayor. Motion has been made. Thank you. Uh, next item is to approve the list of the July meeting. Do we have any comments? At this time, we'd like to make a public comment. <laughs> Please bring a comment and report. If you want to be started by the staff liaison by using the right hand feature at the bottom of your screen. If you dial in, you can use star and engage the right hand feature. And we have one person online. We wanted to see. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Um, Vice Chair Lee <laughs> made the motion and Commissioner Dawkins second. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll try to follow that. Actually, did you get the earlier ones? Uh, Commissioner Dawkins, how do Yes. Commissioner Evans? Yes. Commissioner Grass? Yes. Chair Joshua? Yes. Uh, Vice Chair Lee? Yes. And Commissioner Van Yes. Okay, the motion passes to hand. Thank you for continuing item D3. All Yes. Okay, just, just one comment. Last meeting, there was an attention to present the interest of the person who wanted to be in the last meeting. So I'm, I'm not sure how to make it. I think someone solicited me, solicited if I wanted to present. Think so, but yeah, I mean, others are really interested in this opportunity and seeing in front of the I'm happy to do it. Okay, so we have a motion to approve so we can proceed um, with the item and we are looking for a review and an update to the report out to council that's tentatively scheduled for September 10th. And we have the presentation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We are in soon that you were going to do it. <laughs> 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 so just going through the presentation, um, and, and you guys can do this review. Um, we do have the plan from 2023 and 2024 with the eight goals um, stated. The three primary goals being that the PRC is a forum for public information, um, that the PRC is supported supports and advises the development of the Menlo Park Community Campus, or which is now called the Valley Haven Community Campus, and facilitate the goals laid out in the 2020-19 Parks and Facility Master Plan. This is the primary and then additional goals below. Some picture, so that you paint the picture, if you will. 
Um, so then it goes through the specific goals, um, the first being act as a public forum for information and discussion. And some specific examples of that. More pictures, the next poll, and we're on to three. Um, so about the community campus, and then facilitate the poll later. Mm -hmm. A lot of discussion about the poll last year. Summary of additional items that the commission reviewed and have focused on for 23-24. Plan, chair, vice chair, selection, policy review, recommended the department's strategic plan for 2024 through 2026, and monthly transparency. More pictures, and then ongoing tasks, onboarding new commissioners, collaboration and coordination with the library commission, and then moving forward, continue to support the community campus, um, support vibrant and relevant community centers and recreation services for the park residents. Um, looking forward to council feedback in this, and then just thanking them for their support. If you are on Zoom, please not have a please not leave the word again feature of the operations team. If you're dialing in and you have a comment, you can use star 9 to engage the scan function. And this is for item D3, prepare a report to the council and press the right commission work plan for 2013. No comment. Thank you, I have a question about that. For onboarding the commissioners, is it a trigger joint July of two? Yeah. Yeah. I was noting that we also probably need another shoot of that shoot next to last slide. Find that. And then just some uh, just some housekeeping stuff for Vice Chair Lee. Once you guys did approve the presentation, I'm going to give it to the clerk and they will run it at the meeting so you won't have to. Oh, I think they need the library to change the clerk or something, but it's, it's, it is pretty easy and I'll be there um, on the 10th for more support. But it's, Sure. Um, you, I don't know if you want to just say this is clear, but it's going to just follow um, summarize. Um, just yeah, unless there are additional topics for the conversation or additional things that you would like to highlight, talk about it now with the, with the commission and then bring it up. Normally speaking, the city council they um they really appreciate hearing uh person report out from the commissions, which they can do once a year typically, and generally they're since this is looking back on the achievements of the commission last year, they generally don't have a lot of questions and it's more like, hey, we appreciate what you're doing, we really want to highlight this or that or the other achievement. Um, because looking ahead, that's kind of a separate question for doing something. Mm -hmm. So basically just getting it in the record. So well, definitely hearing the report. I mean they could ask questions or point things out, but generally uh, typically it, it's, it's more of a hey, thank you for all of your service. It's really how the mission goes. So, yeah. And yeah, even the library commission, which is the most recent report out, um, the chair asked if the city council had any feedback on their work plan and things like that, and they did not. Any other comments or questions? Um, so, I, I just, just to be clear, this is the draft that's going to be approving it. 
I think we have, you know, with making a few notes on the things that you were saying that we need to update your photo, we need to, need to put uh, where we refer to the MPCC, which is what we're working in was time will probably be ACC in the parentheses and changing three descriptions. Do you need us to approve this? I think you can just look as a general a sense that this looks good. Should we look at the report out? You know, unless there's any questions and concerns, you can probably just get all the head nods. By acclamation. Thank you, I'll forget the word. By acclamation. You got your left right. That's fine. Thank you. I guess, um, so thinking of foods and brand, like whenever we're saying that there's a developer record, people's names are, do we include the names of the engineers, perhaps? And especially those who give in their service and moved on to the things, what are we moving on to this field? So we could do a list of uh, slide with, uh, Commission roster and then commission roster during the 2023-24. Just so we capture everybody who was on the commission who was moved on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, I, I don't. This last year was typical for Kyle Hansberg, but uh, I think there were some long meetings and things the folks put in their time. Be helpful to bring. <laughs> So the staff recommends that the commission recommend its annual work plan uh, to city council. And that's for 2024 through 2025. Staff updated the 24-25 work plan following the PRC review in June of 2024. There are eight goals being carried over in this work plan, and those are to serve as a forum, continue to support and advise programs for Gaugate and Community Campus, advise on maintenance or upgrade of recreation facilities, review, review budget proposal prior to City Council's review, Review public facing policies. Receive presentations from staff on major parks and recreation. Service area and program. And maintain 12 month scheduled commission agenda items. There are also four additional goals or new goals um, to support the Youth Advisory Committee to, um, to participate in facility tours. You know, should be to continue to review public facing policies and um, to uh, review and advise on potential syner synergies with um, or and support other departments throughout the city. I'd like to just have a um, discussion regarding the work plan. I just want to recognize there may be a duplicate in these 12 in reviewing the um, Thank you. At this time, we'd like to make a public comment on the item. We do not have a sign of liaison, but you can use the feature of the population screen. If you dial in, you need to use jar line for the page to raise hand march. No. Okay, and uh, we'll probably talk about the so, like the addition of the idea of the tours. We have to get the smart with the city. Um, I think the next few meetings on actually presentation 
Agenda, the commission will review the tentative agenda calendar for the several months. So, I'll move back to the public we'll start that in session. Okay. Do we need to do this? Yes, I'll be the second. Do I have a first and a second? So it's a hearing with the motioner and documents. Okay, let's all note uh, the motion of four is to accept the work plan as is. And Commissioner Dawkins, there you go. Commissioner Adams? Commissioner Brad? Chair Joshua. Vice Chair Lee. And Commissioner Van Buren. Okay. Motion passes unanimously with Chairman Van Buren. Okay, moving on to item 20, recommend updating, sorting, and amendment of calls. Thank you. Uh, we'll just get uh, the point screen on four. It's this is, these are updates to a policy we've had in place for some years. And then there was a little bit of an administrative update in 2022 as we were coming out of the pandemic. Um, you can set report lists of some of the updates that staff is recommending uh, to reorder and reformat the document to our current document standards to clarify. Room scheduling priorities and time frames and how far in advance or not can we must be granted just kind of clarify that. Um, update the cancellation and refund information to be consistent with the current master fee schedule. All of our fees that we charge, including any cancellation fees, um, they're set by city council on the master fee schedule. That has changed, so those changes are incorporated here. And then various like, typographical corrections and clarifications. So, Mostly administrative, however, there is one um, uh, item that's actually in the agenda was posted the, um, on the advice of the city manager's office. They have to look at it. This one item here, I'll turn it up a little bit, for under rental process. Um, one of the um, clarifications here was to um, this advance uh, notice for making a uh, rental, as I mentioned earlier. So the recommend calls. Okay, so this item here where it says, residents of Menlo Park may submit rental applications up to nine months in advance of the date, non-residents up to six months in advance, that's all good. Uh, but the when it says for weddings, rental applications may be submitted up to 12 months in advance. It doesn't specify is that for resident or non-resident. So, what we'd like to do if, if the commission is agreeable to that incorporates it in recommending the policy is just to clarify that 12 months would be for residents for weddings. And then if you were to sort of extend that differential to non-residents, then that would be nine months for non-residents. And um, you know, we could just sort of uh, add that uh, you know, on like recommendation from you it would be worded similarly, which is for weddings. Residents of the incorporated city of Mellon Park may submit so applications up to 12 months in advance, and for non residents, it be nothing, which we actually just put there in place. This. And if you need to, we could put that on the screen, but that's the gist of it. Other than that, there's no other um, aspects of what I'm doing repetitions. At this time, if you'd like to make public comments, please don't try to stop by using the right hand feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you're dialing in, you can use the start line. You can use start line so you can engage the right hand function. No. 
if there's no public comment, this site will be closed for public comment with a welcome to all the same Question for Director Ryan. How are we going as far as facility results and weddings? Are we like photographs? We have people that in town that are waiting for out of town people to be too in for weddings. I mean, how's it going? Yeah, great. Now I turn to uh, try to check here for some more detail, but here at the RAF Center, we get around uh, one inquiry a month for weddings. Um, folks seeking wedding bookings, they typically do want a, like, a year advance notice. Um, that results actually in, I think, three bookings over the last year. So 12 inquiries, three bookings. Mm -hmm. um, most of the inquiries and bookings are from non-residents. Um, so uh, it's not particularly impactful to the schedule, uh, but we did see kind of that gap with inquiries and bookings and folks kind of expressing the like a year to plan. And overall facilities were... Okay, set aside. Yeah, I would say that we are meeting the demand. Absolutely. We need to meet that. Yeah, you will. Great. Is it still the actual political design? So, this facility rental. Is for the, the buildings and the structure. So it includes um, this facility, the gym, the gymnasium, the Belhaven um, community campus, community room, and there's a room in gymnastics. There are, so there are separate policies for like picnic area rentals, for athletic field rentals. Um, I think that will be from part of that separate. Policy because of the unique location. Um, the tennis and or pickleball tournaments also are available. Uh, those are the main outdoor areas that we cover in LCS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are the big ones. They're the big ones. Yeah. And the policy that you mentioned, same to that. They're similar opportunity to like the unique needs and specifications of say an athletic field or on the multi-purpose fields here in Burgess Park or specific to tennis sports, specific to um, picnic areas, but generally the same sort of gist. Um, the facility rental policy, the indoor policy, in, in part the update here uh, is driven by the factors I just mentioned, but also the new Valley Community Campus opened just in May, which prompted there's certainly interest in renting those facilities. So another change I didn't mention is you know we added that to the list of facilities that this covers. Um, and the demand for the indoor spaces uh, can be but there's a little more policy detail because of the use of the facility. There's just a lot more restrictions required. For renting, like for a wedding or engineer or something like that, and yours, um, as opposed to like the wedding area. Um, in the week, I was going to say, how did HCC go with the engineers? Yeah, great. So, we have not done accepting public rentals yet. So, we're actually Always in preparing to do that, um, ideally since next month. With the initial period from H1 to, the, to current, we've been just focused on getting the building up and running, city operated programs up and running, uh, troubleshooting, various building issues. Um, and so that there's quite a bit of interest though. Um, so I, I can't say like, specifically how many have requested for specific different ways of container, but the um, Interest is any guy, um, it'll be pretty significant. Um, we, we anticipate a lot of this. Mm -hmm. I think there's one about the parking. It seems like it's just a uh, park, wherever um, the cars in the street designate parking spaces. Is it worthwhile to maybe add an additional charge to something? Parking, like the space in the parking lot, because like, you take a hundred percent 
that's at least uh, uh, 50 cars. It's not very large. And uh, speaking of the LA community campus, when there's an overflow, the entire community just gets flood lined with cars. cars and it's, it's kind of somewhat uh, you know, just become worse than larger than the department we want to do is some sort of pause uh, to, in this time. Good comment. Sorry, I'm scrolling. So, apologies for anyone who's looking at the screen and seeing some scrolling. I'm trying to do it slowly to find the mention of the Put it on the screen, but I think by sure we kind of captured it pretty well. Um, that's a, a good, an interesting suggestion. We do not currently have a fee in the master fee schedule for parking. So, that would be something we have to uh, investigate. And then if but we have to take a, a fee recommendation to the city council. Say, hey, let's if we recommend implementing a fee for parking. I think there's definitely some merit to the, the suggestion to uh, explore a little further. Uh, so, clarification on that was that for the facility that is the size number of parking spaces. I don't recall that in the policy. That's what I was kind of scrolling to get to. I think it just indicates that the, the intent behind that, and that is part of the policy from years ago, is that um, visitors should park only in designated spaces, meaning not on the grass or or on the curb or other places, which I guess was a thing. That when you have a policy like this and you see like the don't do this, there's usually a story behind it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's probably a story behind it. Behind that one related to parking and it's in trouble than actual parking space. Uh, Seven page four. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I'm scrolling with raised payments. Are we now? Those are allowed. I see it in the screen. So folks can see the structure and the club. Yeah. Yeah. Just imagine there's a soccer game at Kelly Park. There's a swim event. Then you have 100 person might be with me. I don't know. And then a lot of the spots are actually EV only. So, our people is good. Yeah, it's very interesting point you bring up because I had a, a, a customer a question about that. The only spot that are designated for EV are the six on that first row of parking. The other ones can be used by regular parking as well as EV vehicles, even though I think we're going to have to try to figure something out with that because I know when you look on the charge point app to see if things are available, it does tell you if the car is parked in the spot, but not the possibility. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to figure that out. But you're right, there's 20, 21 EV spots, which is great, but if Everybody's there checking in the car and waiting on the soccer team. Pretty cool. Right. I think all we're trying to do is up to the city wants to boost weddings. It's not like your wedding inventory is actually getting low in the year. It would not materially the impact of the city. It would be worth just having rest in the year. Of course, especially in the wedding. Great question. So, um, weddings, what we found is that um, folks want that more lead time. Related to resident and non resident, we've gotten pretty clear direction from city council that we really should prioritize residents in all aspects of that. It makes sense yeah. to do so, including, for example, fees. Non residents do pay a premium. In addition, we have scheduling prioritization. City council has um, indicated like they would also like to see um, some differential there as well. So um, this is what kind of reflects that. As far as needing to boost weddings, um, really, I think our, Trisha, jump in, uh, we want to ensure that the facility is accessible to the community for all manner of events. Um, if we see that there is interest in a particular type of event, but in this case, this is not enough lead time or something like that. And it's not working for you know, people who are in fire. That's what kind of helps us say, hey, maybe we need to treat this so, um, you know, there's not like that. Degree. 
Okay. But the all I should say all the, the rental fee is the same at the first given to this. Okay, okay. whatever I have to say for now. Um, so can the entire change of the original weddings can ask for a motion to approve the motion to approve. All second. That's Commissioner Graf and motioning and Commissioner Ems second. Thank you, Dan. Okay, so then the motion went forward to recommend the facility policy rental minor edits to uh, wedding and non resident resident lead time nine months for non residents and 12 for residents. Yes, nine for non residents, 12 for residents. Everything okay. works. Out. And Commissioner Dalton, any vote? Uh, Commissioner End? Approved. Commissioner Brown. Chair Joshua. Mm -hmm. Vice Chair Lee. Commissioner Van Dillen. And Russian Captain from Janice, who is shown in the house. Moving on to the next item, the one strategic plan for all staff. Thank you, Chair. The Plato asks that you receive this update on the um, department goal to achieve accreditation. Um, the CAP accreditation or the Committee of Accreditation of Parks and Recreation Agencies is the only national accreditation for parks and recreation agencies. It uh, is a measure of the overall quality of operations, management, and services of parks and recreation agencies. It is in the department strategic plan for 2024-2026 um, to receive accreditation by fall of 2026. The 2019 edition of the standards for the accreditation uh, include 154 standards um, and agencies must comply with 36 of the fundamental standards and 118 of the non fundamental standards. There are six steps to the accreditation process. There's an application, um, a staff member must attend accreditation training, um, the agency uh, program self-assessment with narrative description of compliance and evidence of compliance. The um, self-assessment is presented to the CAPRA review team for review. The CRT, CRT team or the CAPRA review team is provide an on-site visit to inspect facilities and evaluate documents to determine if standards are met. And then the agency attends a proper hearing to hear the decision of whether or not is success. And the goal is to ultimately have a visitation by 2026. At this time, if you'd like to make a comment on this item, Please note that this app is on by using the raise hand feature at the bottom of the Zoom screen. If you're dialing in, you can use star nine to engage the raise hand function. No public comment. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Yeah, so the organization is the uh, National um, Parks and Recreation Association. And it's a part of It's just a supportive agency for parks and recreation professionals and agencies. So is that like a government entity or? It is not. No. It's, just, no. it's a, a membership. A Association, like the American Mental Medical Association or American Library Association, this is like the Parks and Rec version of it, and uh, uh, they do accreditation. That's one of the one of the services they offer. Are there any local cities accredited? Local, there are not. Mm -hmm. I, the, the most local I know of is the Dunas um, near Elbridge. They just most recently got 
So we would potentially be able to The goal is to have a visitation by fall 2020. Well, we are to it. So I would say, first of all, it's very achievable for us to get accreditation within two years. Um, the uh, It's an accreditation, so pretty stringent. Um, it includes um, administrative functions like human resources, finance, and some other things that we, um, you know, we are a club multi department city, and so um, there would be something to do not only with our own like kind of programs and services, but in particular with some of those other departments, public works, man uh, maintains the facilities of uh, LCS to not directly maintain them. So. Um, we're at, I would say we are at around 75, 80 percent, like box checked. Mm -hmm. But then there's another 20 to 25 percent, like who box not checked. It's going to take some work to check the box, but it's doable. Okay. Anything more there? I think that's good. Yeah. What was the motivation? I think ultimately the, the motivation is behind the event, it brings teams together. Which is from my police and what other agencies that are in. Um, I think that it sh truly shows the quality of the organization and it shows it's really good the best for the and, and it, it would present that to the community and beyond. And, and I would add that I think there's value in going through the process. Um, because you get to see, you have sort of a standard, and you get to see where maybe you haven't quite gotten to the standard, see what you could do to get to the standard. So I think there's value in going through that process. Doing a self assessment, rigorous self assessment, like this sort of accreditation and kind of benchmarking ourselves. So. Uh, and one more thing, which is that other companies in other I think received accreditation from their institutes. For example, the uh, public works department recently got accreditation from the American Society of Public Works Professionals. I forget the acronym exactly, but their national accreditation out of the police department was actually looking at their version of accreditation. Um, the library division is looking at um, accreditation. And um, probably not in the immediate future, but our child care programs are also there's a national accreditation there. That might be a little farther down the road. There's, there's only so much accreditation we even want to see. Uh, but I think it's a best practice, and we do have some present in the city as well. Okay, why do you want to share the first and the visiting for the city? The accreditation is every five years. Um, so you said that not a lot of agencies surrounding that are, are many of the members of the Asian society, like what does membership with the visual guy compared to maybe like the cities? Sure. Um, from my perspective and um, experience, the it's general membership, it's in support of you know, with professionals and agencies in the way of um, professional development, providing resources, providing opportunities um, for advocacy and advancing the profession, um, and really just being a voice um, and, a, and um, supporting the agencies and working them out. And generally, so just that next step. <laughs> It's a great that you found something you can do best practices and find you things. I think that it reflects well on city staff that you open yourself up to another body to take a look. And it's just, you know, it's really good. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to make a public comment on this item. Please note by staff meeting on by using the right hand feature to help members to use the If you're dialing in, you can use star 9 to engage the right hand function.
So informationally, we do have um, in your packets our monthly data and statistics for the month of July, and that goes through each of the areas within our department. Got it there for your review. And then anecdotally, we do have some events that we would like to share and some um, things that have happened uh, for July. But we have had an update to our activity guide webpage. And specifically, we have created within the webpage distinct tabs that um, now call out youth programming, adult program programming, um, older adult gymnastics, products, and um, all of the activities. And that just kind of created a better look and um, better experience for our users from our perspective. Um, and we're preparing to roll that out. Um, and then uh, there was a study session with City Council regarding community events on August 13th. That was just a, a general review of our events for 2024-2025. Um, and City Council discussed efficiencies and the events in general, um, the types of events and everything that goes into the events. You know, so this is, these are the tasks. Just makes it a little easier, hopefully, for people to kind of come back. You can always use the search, search function over here on the left. Easier for us. Right. your experience? How do you think it's going to be? Look. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And then um, beyond that, our music in the park included August 14th. We had different music experiences at Fremont Park and at Kelly Park. Summer service, the youth um, had a youth cooking program, and that um, summer service is like a camp based model where the youth um, experience different types of service throughout the city. Um, Senior Center Luau event um, was had 50 senior participants. 2024 Summer Olympics um, opening ceremony watch party at gymnastics occurred for the, for the viewing of the um, opening ceremonies. And then um, coming up, we have Team, team Friday program series, starting with a swim experience for the team this Friday at the Belhaven Pool. And um, all of the other events for the teams are listed here in this at this time, if you'd like to make a public comment, please not by the liaison by using the raise hand feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you're dialing in, you can use star nine to engage the raise hand function. No public comment. So uh, the commission maintains the agenda calendar uh, for 12 months or so on the great other areas of August 28th tips. We're just opening that right now. And looking ahead, we populated up through February at this point. I'm happy to have this far out as you want to go. Um, I think earlier there was some uh, discussion. I think the chair Joshua suggested maybe starting the program, plug in some of the staff presentations in the various months. So just looking ahead, uh, next month at this point in time, there are a few different updates that uh, we're preparing to bring forward. Um, in the past months, there did some interest in a discussion on parks policy enforcement. So we're looking uh, to have the uh, park supervisor come back, the uh, Don Rosa, talk a little bit about that. Um, we do have a couple of surveys coming up that we'd like to uh, run by the commission community survey. How are we doing? What programs are you interested in? So one is about our recreation and community programs, community programs for any library, senior center, um, and a separate products user survey. Um, then um, I know the Youth Advisory Committee is reconvening now the school is back in session. 
we believe that by it would be ready to do an initial introduction for the new commissioners. That is uh, technically a, a committee of the PRC is comprised of local high school youth, um, and then they uh, report out to the PRC a couple of times a year. Um, so once they kind of see what we're going to be doing, and then they come back in the spring, typically in February, we'll do report. Also, review those survey results we talked about. Um, from the public comment earlier, at this point in time, we've got uh, tentatively we're proposing an update on the tennis and pickleball feasibility study coming back in November. Um, for new commissioners, this is something that they discussed the previous months in the December meeting to be a joint meeting with the library commission um, and do kind of a year in review and then. Uh, uh, adjourn to kind of big old house social and um, then I will go every single item here, but that's made of the year. Of course, it's all the chair and the rest of the commission. We want to arrange things, add things, take them off, whatever it is. Actually, we have a comment on the site. At this point, if you'd like to make a comment, please let us know. It's already to the right conclusion. And you violate anything, you start after the day. And this is what the attention agenda gathered. No public comment. Public comment is travel and the title of the commission is. The only question I have that I think is right in as the clubs and the ELF sharing is part. Is that something we want on the agenda to discuss? Or do we? There was an email sent from a citizen about sharing his firm on the rest of the Not privy to the email. Right. Yeah. Something about algae, terminal stocking, and euthanasia. Citizen in certain that we bring up some gladly for you the emails and you can address it and make you respond. I just want to share with you something to do with the thing. It's like, I think I did that. Yeah. Well, we got a lot of emails for the naming process and calls to the ball. So I think we just look at the website and see our names and emails there. And, and that's all fine to get feedback directly from the public. Just um, just be careful when um, somebody sends something to the entire PRC that you don't start getting into a back and forth discussion. You can put it down. Yeah, because that, that could slide into possible chronic uh, complications. So, yeah, it's okay to reply directly back to them and say, thank you. Got it, and we're maybe while you're seeing or replying to them, you can CC the staff and say, mm -hmm. or you can stop. Got it. I didn't need to do anything. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, it's always good residents uh, reach out and say, I've got this question, I've got this concern, I might be this thing is broken or something, and why it fits. And so we want to be very responsive to that. And, if it is something that kind of needs a full commission discussion, always happy to do that. On this one, um, what sort of comes to mind for me, something to consider is maybe next month we're looking at a few updates, one in particular like related to parks. Um, one thing we could do as part of that presentation is um, a, a, kind of a breakdown the different ways that people can report issues to the city, where to report them, and how to handle different uh, kind of reports. Like where, where should they go, especially at, at commission members like you receive just kind of like an orientation so that you know you can 
really just say, oh, yeah, what you want to do is go to our online reporting app. Oh, hey, I'm going to bring that to the commission where we just report that to staff. So we can have that part of the September discussion. See, yeah. I actually have okay. an overall view of the response. I have to get the main response. Right. I think a lot of times, um, the citizens don't know how to navigate that bureaucracy or who to mess it to. And they hear it. There isn't there. So they see your email and they send it to you, um, or they send it to the staff, which is fine. Yeah. But um, there is that ACT mental art app, which can geolocate stuff. So if you're out on your walk and you see a um, hot pole or foreign fence or a sprinkler head that's broken or something, you can like enter it into that app and you can geotag it at the same time. And then it gets sort of sorted out and back into the appropriate staff member. For the most part, those things go to. Um, Public works because they do the maintenance of the parks, but sometimes it is sort of leaning towards policy questions that are going to shock my nutrition or dairy. Um, the other thing is on that app, you can like follow certain areas or certain subjects. So I follow up things like parks and playgrounds. So if somebody else reports something in the app, I get a notification and so on. So it is literally so I get a heads up. Yeah, I was going to say the app is really good. It's important. Mm -hmm. We have a neighborhood issue and we got a response from you know, Pete and you should in the city because the city is about to respond to me. You got a nice long email. I told my neighbor was, and it's just where you have to get a great response from the state because you the app or click the app. Just random things. And I, I, I walk around the parks a lot and people know who I am and I'm on the commission. I just show them the app. And it's like, well, just a lot of people didn't know that. So it's just, it works really well. But some people get some issues that, like this person's email that maybe they submit a request and they don't get the response they want. So I think it's great to set it. You yes. have to stay. And then if there is an issue, I know you'll let us know something that should be on the agenda. So I think it works. The only other thing I'll point out May, is that you moved your uh, November meeting up a week because of Thanksgiving. So sometimes during the year, just where the meetings fall and misalign or align with all of this, we will we'll do that. Sometimes that happens with joint meetings where you'll see the, the normal Wednesday moves because it's a library commission third line of thing. Um, so that's you, you'll come the next month to have your one issues. Um, so be helpful. If there are items to be added to the agenda, is how, how what's the process for that? Well, one reason why this can be added at the end of the meeting is if we're talking to this, it also could be communicated to Chair Joshua or okay. Lord. Here is exactly the arm. Um, so any of those you want. When you set up this, you can search the new lobby. So you can put some two, two way. One, just a very quick one. Being there. And then the next step is to really have just which is very good. So um, I'll jump in the first one, which I think I just detected. We can maybe do an overview of all parts next month and how to report issues because it's, it's not a lot of material there. It looks like that would be a good thing like the time frame. Right? As far as park tours, I think it would go to Trisha and Nick to uh, talk through like, what are some different options. Um, I might have the ground. Yeah, so there's a couple of different ways, Tristan, that I was thinking we could do it. And one of them is, you know, the commission could say, I want to assign two commissioners to go out to this park and then report back to all the commissions. You could do it that way. And then staff could arrange to go with you to provide 
perfect system for access or um, background so information. Or we could do like just particular days for tours. We might have to notice it as a meeting um, just so that people know that there could be a forum of commissioners showing up discussing the business other than for the parks, just so they know. That could work too. We could do like a couple of three parks in a day. I probably don't want to do more than two or three parks in a day because it gets most of that comes to the do that. The challenge to that is then fitting it into everybody's schedule to get everybody to pick days where everybody can come together. So it's doable. It's just those are usually weekend days and weekends are precious for people. So I think we can do shows too. We can just check with the day that we do and we can do the meetings. Then those commissioners come back and report. The whole Capture that here in, in September. It's, it's all seems to have a piece, and we do have several new commissioners. We could do that earlier. Because he has not, and so yeah. looks good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, last time we want commissioner reports. Maybe the commissioner.